This is a short guide to installing and configuring Magento Functional Test Framework, MFTF, how to install MFTF, and how to configure it for first run to get us up and running, to be able to generate tests, and to run an initial test. Then there'll be further short videos in the series explaining the key parts of MFTF, how to set up tests, and the supporting objects. Let's start. We're looking at, I'm going to be following through the Getting Started Guide from DevDocs. If you go to devdocsmagento.com, under Testing, Functional Accept Testing, MFTF, within that we have this Getting Started Guide. So, the Getting Started Guide follows through a Git installed Magento to instance. However, this will also work in a Composer installed instance. As seen here, I'm going to use Mag Magento Project Community Edition here, as you see it installed successfully. Now, when we install it, either via Git or via Composer, as part of Magento 2, the Magento Functional Test Framework is a Composer dependency. So for a Git installation, when you Composer install, you will have MFTF also installed. Now we do need to prepare our environment under test, and we have three main actions to perform to do that. And that's within Magento Admin. The first is to disable WYSIWYG. This is because most of the tests don't use WYSIWYG. Some testing does. Those tests will specifically re-enable WYSIWYG where necessary and will disable it afterwards. So as we can see here, we go to Stores, Settings, Configuration, General Content Management. I have a local environment set up, Login to Admin. This is a local environment on my computer on Apache. We do also support Nginx configurations as well, and it's also possible with Docker environments. So I've logged into the admin backend. Following through the guide to log in as admin is what done. Navigate to Stores, Settings, Configurations, General Content Management. So Stores, Configuration, and General Content Management. This is where we have our WYSIWYG options. So normally, uh, it's set to enabled by default. That's the initial state. We're using the system value. So uncheck Set Disabled Completely and save that configuration. You'll see that's on our default config. If you wish to use a different store view, go ahead. But otherwise, we're going to stay on our default config. Once we've disabled the WYSIWYG, we have some security settings. There are a couple of security settings that do make testing a lot more difficult. However, these are only applicable to a test environment. These are important security settings, for example, adding secret key to URL. So only disable these within a test environment only. So stores, settings, configuration, we go to advanced admin security. Under advanced, into admin, and then into the security section. Admin account sharing, set to uncheck system value and set to yes. The add secret keys to URLs will be enabled by default. That will make testing a lot more difficult as URLs are not predictable. So uncheck system value, set the value to no and save the config. That is all of the manual setup of the environment required. We have some Nginx settings here as well, if that's what you're running. If you're running Apache, we'll run through the rest of the guide. That is what I'm running locally, so we will be running through the Apache guide. So we're gonna run this through as a set up an embedded MFTF. And what we mean by that is that the framework is testing the instance of Magento, which the MFTF is installed against. So we have the instant running, and as a composer dependency, you have the framework. If you were to have, for example, an MFTF 
instance where you just want to run MFTF alone and a separate Magento 2 instance on a separate machine or server that you're going to test against. We have part of the guide to set up a standalone MFTF. That'll be covered in a different video. For now, we're setting up an embedded MFTF. So Composer install for a git install. That's, of course, been handled by our Composer create project that we've used. So step one, build the project. So the Magento functional test framework under the vendor folder has an MFTF command under vendor bin. So there's a vendor bin MFTF, just like the vendor bin Magento command. This will be for MFTF specific commands. We'll copy this and run it in our environment. So build project does several things. You will have to run this when you first set up MFTF. And also if you upgrade MFTF, you should rerun that to make sure you get all the relevant changes to these files. So it first removes all previous MFTF files from the file system. Then it applies a conception YAML and a functional suite YAML. These are conception files that dictate how our test run, some of our environment variables. We then create a command.php that's put to acceptance utils command.php. We'll touch on exactly what that does in a moment. We also have a .credentials.example. So that's an example of how to use a credentials file. That we'll cover credentials in a later video, but the example file is provided. And we create a base.env configuration as well. The .env file is what we're going to have to set up in this example. So we've built the project. There are instructions here if you're using PHP Storm to generate a URN catalog and to force generation if the IDF file doesn't already exist. That is useful for development uh, MFTF under PHP Storm. For us, we're going to edit the env file next in step two. Now, the example here is Vim, but of course, I prefer Nano. So we're going to go ahead and use the same command, nano dev tests acceptance.env. So what we have here is several environment variables and settings. There are additional settings that can be added from the dev docs. But for now, really all we need to look at is make sure that our Magento base URL, that's the URL of the instance under test, is set correctly to what I want to test. So I'm setting this to 233.local. It does require the HTTP colon slash slash. As long as the uh, instance is rootable, you can set the address here. If you're setting up a local environment, this can route to an IP address, but we suggest you set up a host name in your Etsy hosts. So I've set up my Magento instance so that the backend name, username, and password are all standard default test values we use. So these uh, pre-written .env values will be correct and they'll match my environment. If yours are different, of course, change them here if you've changed the username or password or the backend name. Okay, we'll save this file out. That file is in dev test acceptance.env if you need to go and make edits to that. Now that we've done that, that's all we should really need to touch the env file for. So now we need to enable the Magento CLI commands. That's step three. So when we build projects with the command.php file here, that's what allows us to use Magento CLI commands in the tests against the environment itself. However, the normal security configuration doesn't allow that. So we have to make some edits. So we have to, in Apache, use an HT access file to allow those CLI commands to be sent and executed. For Nginx, look further up the page in DevDocs and there's instructions there. For, for us, we're copying the sample file to .ht access file, and that should work for what we need. Now, we do need a Selenium server running. There's instructions here to how to run that. And if you go to the top of the page, we'll list the current versions that are required. Make sure you have those and the server's running. I already have a server running. And now we're going to go ahead and generate the tests. This command here, vendor bin MFTF generate tests. This takes all of the XML, tests, pages, sections. And then what it does is generates conception style PHP. And this is what's actually executed using conception. It, that's going to translate it into Selenium commands sent to the Selenium server to drive the browser. 
this command, you can run to see the output of what the generated PHP actually looks like. That's useful for debugging. However, most of the run commands, which will be covered, run tests, run groups, run suites, all of those usually include a generation as its first step so that running a test or a group will regenerate your tests. So if you make a change to a test and rerun that test, it will regenerate the change from XML to PHP. So you see here, we do hit a lot of deprecation errors. The reason for that is that we have begun in the framework enforcing that certain annotations are required. However, that would be a breaking change to existing tests. So for now, we'll see deprecation notices. From the next MFTF major breaking version, version 3, we will be enforcing that. So when you see deprecation warnings, we do know to clean them up. These are Magento in 232, so we'll be cleaning those up for Magento 233. There are no errors, and the generate test command successfully run. So the final step is to attempt to run a test. So we'll use vendor bin MFTF, run colon test, provide a test name, and we'll also use dash dash remove. That means it's going to clear out the generated tests, and that gives us a clean generation and clean run of tests. So again, a clean generation, and we're running admin login test. As you see, open a browser, login as admin, it's going to verify it's on the correct page, and it's passed. One test, one assertion, all looking good. And the final thing, when that command completes, or any set of tests completes, the framework has a underscore output folder with allure results. It automatically generates a set of allure results. Allures are supported reporting framework. And we can use the allure serve command against the output directory. That's going to take the output of that format in allure format, generates a report, opens a web server, and gives us a nice report we can click through. And it'll show us what the test is. If there's failures, we can see screenshots. We'll cover in a later video. But for now, that's MFTF installed, configured, running against an environment. I hope that's helped, and I hope I see you in the next video. Thank you.